Hi guys, and welcome back to History of Vision Success. So today we're going to be um, exploring and finding out what happened in one of history's biggest mysteries and I guess most exciting tales, um, one with an extremely tragic ending. So I'm going to start here now. On a cold morning in Berlin in February the 27th, 1920, a young woman jumped off a bridge into the freezing cold water of the Landwehr Canal, and that's right behind me. She was rescued by a police officer and rushed to hospital. On regaining consciousness, she appeared confused, stating she could not remember her name. Eventually, she was hospitalized and the doctors found her body covered with scars. When she spoke German, she also spoke with an accent recognized as Russian. Two years later, rumors had spread. Was she none other than Anastasia, the Grand Duchess of Russia? Had she escaped the massacre of her family? Now, when Tsar Nicholas was overthrown in 1917, he and his family were held in a place in Zarkov Selo outside of St. Petersburg. Now you have to excuse my Russian pronunciation. Um, in 1918, he, along with his young family, were led down to the basement of their residence and shot to death by members of the Cheka. Their bodies were dragged to an abandoned mine and burned. When their bodies were finally discovered near, near Yekaterinburg, two were missing, that of Nicholas's young son, Alexei, and his youngest daughter, Anastasia had the youngest Romanov children been spared. Now, 34 women declared they were Anastasia, of which one of them was our young lady from Berlin. She turned out to be a lady most commonly known as Anna Anderson, um, who was discovered to actually have been a former employee of an ammunition factory in Poland. She dropped a hand grenade while working there, which exploded, killing um, somebody in front of her, which triggered post-traumatic stress and led to the case of shock. Um, so she is very, very well known as, as I guess, Anastasia's best, um, what, I don't even know what we call it, you know, somebody impersonating or, or potentially being the young princess. Now, who actually was Anastasia? So she was born on the 18th of June in 1901, and she was the fourth daughter to Tsar Nicholas and his wife, the Tsarina Alexandra. Her name came from the Greek and meant resurrection, another fact that alluded to her rumored survival. Her young brother, Alexei, suffered from haemophilia type B, which was um, the rarest form of haemophilia that, that you can have. Now, this is chronic and incurable, causing him a lot of pain and the royal family a huge amount of stress um, on behalf of the fact that their heir to the throne has you know, a life debilitating and um, potentially life threatening condition. Now, Anastasia herself might have been a carrier of this gene as her mother was. Um, and there are lots of, of writings to say that the girls also bled more than normal um, when they were you know, hurt or when they were have, having an operation, things like that. She had fine blonde hair, blue eyes, and was known as a very energetic child. One member of the court described her as a true genius in naughtiness. She would climb trees and refuse to come down. She would trip servants and play pranks on her tutors. During the First World War, she also, along with her sister Maria, visited the wounded soldiers, um, playing games of checkers and billiards with them there. Now, by 1917, along with the rest of her family, she was placed under house arrest in the Alexandra Palace during the Russian Revolution. As the Bolsheviks approached, they were moved to Siberia and then finally to the Opetiev house in Yekaterinburg. Whilst in captivity, the girls sold ju sewed jewels into the clothing in their hopes um, that of hiding them from the captors. They, they thought they would get out and they thought they would be able to take those jewels with them. Now they performed plays and played in the garden of their prison. However, the confines of her imprisonment did start to wear Anastasia down. Um, at one point, it's recorded that she opened her window to get some fresh air and was almost shot by a sentry. So by July of 1918, the family's priest stated that she had become despondent and hopeless, no longer singing during service. So it is, you know, 
think about it for a second, guys. We're in the middle of, of this global pandemic right now. Um, and, and the young Anastasia was in a situation quite similar. She was locked up with her family um, in a house with no idea about her future, complete and utter uncertainty about whether they would survive and what would happen to them, surrounded by, you know, some quite unfriendly soldier, soldier-like people. And they were just stuck there at the whim of, of those moving them about and deciding what would happen to them. Now, things get significantly worse for the Romanov family um, after the Bolshevik Revolution, as in October of 1917, Russia is kind of descended into a civil war. This has created a situation where we have the Reds on one side, the communist Bolsheviks, and the whites on the other. And the whites are made up of um, some, you know, soldiers from other European nations, much of the Bol sorry, the Bolsheviks, much of the Romanovs kind of extended family who are the kings and queens of Europe, pretty much, um, you know, representatives of them, fighters from them, and anyone within the country themselves who, who might have wanted a return of the Tsar or who might just be wanting to fight against the communists. Now, we call them the whites. And they started negotiations with the Reds, the Bolsheviks, for the release of the Romanov family. Now, as this negotiation is continuing, it puts the Reds in quite a difficult, precarious position. They know full well the Romanov family stand as symbols of a return of the, the old regime and essentially their own downfall. And when the whites start to advance towards Yekaterinburg, um, the Reds are very, very concerned about the position. Now, the White Army reaches the safe hold the Imperial family have been held in, but they are nowhere to be seen and they have gone. What has been pieced together are, of that night are the following events. Now, the family seemed to have been awoken in the middle of the night and told to dress. Um, they were told they were being moved to a new location, However, instead, they were then taken to a small room in the basement with a circle of, of servants who had remained with them. After several minutes, the guards entered the room and almost instantly the Tsar was murdered with several bullets in his chest. Um, lots of people believe it was actually bullets in his head, but from looking at his skull, once his body is later found, there's, there's no bullet fragments or holes in his skull. So it's been kind of decided quite conclusively that he was shot in the chest. Now, the Tsarina and her daughter Olga, along with other members of the family, um, are the next to be killed. And, you know, we've got this situation where we have this, this group of terrified people in, in this small, dark, dingy basement. Soldiers who have been instructed to carry out, you know, quite a horrific task and bullets just flying everywhere. Um, Anastasia and Maria, the two youngest girls, are said to have crouched against the wall, covering their heads in terror before they were shot as well. Now it's discovered and it has been discovered that the jewels the girls had sewn into their dresses had actually acted as a type of armor um, and many bullets had ricocheted off them. This has led to that very famous tale that actually perhaps Anastasia might have survived the slaughter. Now, whilst Anastasia's supposed escape has been made popular by historical mysteries and films, even the Empress Dowager, her grandmother, who had escaped the Crimea, believed that her family may have survived. And within this kind of chaotic aftermath of the revolution, anything really was possible. Imposters sprung up all over the world, the most famous of these being Anna Anderson, the lady I spoke of earlier, until um, a 1970 ruling declared that no conclusive evidence had been found that she was Anastasia. Um, she is also tested for DNA later and it's found that she's not, she's no match to the Romanov family. Now, her story, however, still inspired a play which then later led to, um, you know, an incredibly great um, animated film with some amazing music in it. So, what actually happened to Anastasia if she wasn't Anna Anderson. Now, in the late 1990s, scientists used DNA evidence to identify the bodies of the Tsar, his wife, and three of their daughters. However, as I previously mentioned, the son and the youngest daughter were missing, and this is where the bodies were, were discovered, actually, in the forest um, near Yekaterinburg. So what actually happened to Anastasia? Well, 
The bodies of Alexei and Anastasia were discovered in 2007 and scientific analysis, including DNA testing, confirmed that these remains were the remains of the imperial family. All four grand duchesses were conclusively killed in 1918. Unlike the film, there was no happy ending for Princess Anastasia.